What's going on guys? This is Matt with Amped Airsoft, and as you can tell, I'm not in the studio. Right now, the studio is actually getting renovated, like a lot of things at the warehouse right now. And they just happen to be right next to each other. So, I'm going to do a couple videos right here in the office, at my desk. Hopefully it's not too cluttered for you guys. But today, I want to bring you guys a pleb to pro on how to install the Redline N7 Milsim Edition. Let's get to it. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so Chris, our buddy OP Airsoft, he's gonna give us a hand installing another N7mm sim in an amped custom rifle that he's actually building for our amped custom line, which will probably be available on our website at some point soon. But, can't really show you little tidbits here and there once it's already installed, so we'll cut back and forth between this and the footage of him actually installing and building that rifle. All right, so right off the bat, Chris installed a amped IGL for the Redline N7. It's a slightly different one because you can tell the N7 is a little longer than some of the other cylinder drop-in units. So this one is more akin to the F1 IGL. So it has a smaller piece that doesn't have all the braiding, so it allows it to flex more to go out your pistol grip. And then for the most part, this install is gonna be very similar to most of the other popular drop-in systems that we have numerous videos on. So if I kind of jump over some of those topics, just head back to those videos and check them out. So obviously, first thing you're gonna do is take your gearbox of the gun you're installing it into and just gut everything out of it. You're not gonna need your gears or anything like that. You know, you may wanna hold on to them for whatever reason, but you will need to keep your trigger your selector pieces and any of your safety pieces. Make sure you hold on to those. Uh, the N7 also does, depending on what gearbox you have, come with the cylinder threaded piece. So if you don't have a VFC gearbox and you take your spring guide out, you can just drop this in and you'll be able to attach your buffer tube no problem. So what we found after doing numerous installs of the Redline N7 Milsim is that some gearboxes do require modification and that is permanent modification, as in using a Dremel to chop some bits out. So use that as a warning. You may have to, you may not have to, depends on the type of gearbox shell that you're using. So first thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna refer to this as your trigger mechanism. They call it the three-way valve on your instruction sheet, which by the way, the N7 Milsim comes with an instruction sheet. It's a little heavy worded, but it has pictures. Those are always good you can easily install it right off of that. But this guide will give you a couple more visuals to help you install it, but please make sure you read those instructions first. So like I said, you're gonna take your trigger mechanism or three-way valve. You're going to need your flora pin or body pin, which is the one pin that we always note as very important for installs and alignment. Kind of goes out the window for this one. You actually use it to help hold your trigger mechanism in place. So what you're gonna end up doing is taking your trigger mechanism, dropping it into your gearbox shell, and you're gonna slide your flora pin through those pieces, line it up, and then this little pin over here will also line up in a correlated hole so that this will actually lock into place and then you should be able to close the gearbox on it. Now this is the main thing that we found some gearboxes need dremeling is that there are the, some of the support pieces or guides that may get in the way um, you'll see actually Chris had to chop down some on this install and we'll cut the footage of that in. So again, just be aware that you may have to do some Dremel work on this. Also, if you guys aren't comfortable with doing that, you can easily send your gun into Amped or you can buy stuff and have us install it for you. Then you don't even have to worry about it at all. But let's keep going. So once you have your trigger mechanism placed in, you're going to take your trigger without your trigger spring. I know it's gonna be a little weird, but you're gonna drop that in, and then you're gonna check your spacing between your trigger and the button on the trigger mechanism. Now, what you wanna have is a slight amount of play. You don't want it to be too tight where it's pressing the button down, and you don't want it to be too loose where you have a lot of travel or too much travel and it's not actually making contact with the button. Now, Redline, as in the instructions recommends you have a little bit of play. Now this is something that you want to continually check while you're installing this into your gearbox just so that you can make sure your spacing and alignment is okay for your trigger to the trigger mechanism. 
once you've got your Dremel in it and this has been placed in, if you are running into issues with that, this can actually be adjusted. As you can see, it is a standard six-sided valve on both sides, so you can undo that and do as Redline recommends, again in the instructions, 180 degree turns of those pieces to help draw it in or pull it back to match where your trigger is setting. So if you are running into issues where it's too close or too far, that's gonna be your first step to check that. Now, once you finally have your trigger and everything set in place, you're gonna drop the N7 itself into the gearbox. Again, this is gonna be just like all the other drop-in videos we've done before. Drop it right in. You're gonna route your hose out the bottom or the back if you happen to do that for your build. Now, if you buy the full kit, it will come looking like this, basically. So you're gonna have one small hose out the back of it and then one off of your trigger mechanism. When it is sitting in the gearbox like this, you literally just have to connect the one out the back of the N7 onto the T-fitting here and then the one out of here onto the solenoid plug here. So once you have the trigger mechanism placed in and the N7, you just literally have to match these two tiny hoses right here. So the one coming out of the solenoid plug on the back of the N7, that goes right here on the T-fitting of the three-way valve. And then the one coming out of here will go into that one right there. And they give you enough slack where you can kind of adjust it around. The Redline says that your trigger board can be installed not trigger board, trigger mechanism, sorry, can be installed either facing this way or that way. I have found that it seems to fit in most standard gearboxes with it facing down. That's maybe just the ones I've grabbed. Maybe it depends on batches. Who knows? But once you get your hoses hooked up, you're going to drop your other half of the gearbox shell in, close it up, you want to do a selector and trigger uh, check to make sure your safety is engaging. And as you know that you bought the Milsim edition, you're not going to have auto. So you're either going to have semi or safe, which I'm totally fine with. I, I like no electronics. I can take this thing out in the rain. So once you get your other half of the shell back on, you're going to drop it into your replica and then you're going to do your complete functions check. Now, Redline wanted us to note that because there is no programmable dwell on this. Your finger is actually the dwell for this system. So when you hold the trigger down, that keeps the nozzle retracted. So your finger is actually acting as the dwell. So as you'll notice, once you get installed and air hooked up to it, you hold the trigger down, the system will hold down and then release. So there may be some instances of double feeding and things of that nature that could be due to newer or high powered springs in your mags or maybe something isn't quite tuned right in your hop up. So they recommend giving those things a check and if you're still having double feeding issues they recommend to maybe check out something like the Red Bull, Red Bull, oh, speaking of Red Bull, it's late and I'm tired. They recommend the Mad Bull shark bucking or any bucking with lips on it to help seat your BBs when they're feeding from your magazine. Most of the installs we've done haven't needed those. The few that did, that solved the issue right out of the bat. So I hope this was a helpful guide to you guys. Um, I'm hoping to install, actually not install, but with the conversion kit that we also have for sale, convert our shop N7 over to a Milson version very soon so we can actually get some shooting footage of ours out to you guys soon. But like I said, I hope this was a helpful guide to you guys. If you have any questions while installing yours or with your electro pneumatic version, post them up down below, shoot us a message on Facebook or our sales email, and we'll do our best to get you some help. Or if you want to order one as a tech build or get it installed into one of your favorite guns, shoot us a message and we can easily take care of that. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Make sure to swing by for the next video, which will be something awesome, hopefully. Peace.